In the last two videos, we created launchers by combining Ant and Maven. Now we're going to build a simple installer. Back in section 3, we made a jar runnable by defining its main class entry. We've also used the assembly plugin to create an Uber jar, that is, a jar with all of its dependencies merged in. But that's not the only thing the assembly plugin can do. And in our current case, where we have multiple programs all using the same library jars, we prefer not to merge the common classes into each program. Instead, we'll create a manifest class path that references the dependencies. The jar plugin lets us do that automatically. Maven already knows our dependencies, so we can simply tell it to add them. We'll start with the server module. We add the jar plugin and give it two configuration elements, main class and add class path. Now let's rebuild it and look at the resulting manifest. Just what we wanted. We can do that for the other three jars. All we need to do is copy this plugin into each of the palms and modify the main class name. But this seems kind of redundant. This should be an easier way. And of course, there is. Let's instead move the configuration into the parents plugin management section. Maven is already binding this plugin to the package phase. By putting it in the plugin management section, we are simply telling it to use this version and configuration. But of course, each jar has a different main class. How can we use the same configuration for each? Simple. We'll use properties. We'll replace the class name in the configuration with a property called main class. Now we'll add a property with that name to each of the program palms. Rebuild again. And let's have a look at the manifest of the control program. Just what we wanted. So are we ready yet? Well, not quite. Note that the manifest expects the dependencies all to be in the same directory as the program, but Maven is building each one into its own. This isn't too surprising. Maven's purpose is actually to create artifacts that can be referenced by coordinates after all. It's not an installer, so let's make a simple one. We'll add another module to this build, just as we did for the launcher. And we'll make this one depend on the programs as well. Now, in a new profile, since we don't need to do this during development, we'll add the assembly plugin. We'll bind its single goal to the package phase, and in the configuration we'll specify two things. The final name as totalizer, to indicate the name of the installer, and we'll specify a custom assembly descriptor in source main assembly. Now let's create that descriptor. We'll start with the header and add an ID as the plugin requires one in order to create the name of the assembly. We specify a format of zip so as to create a zip file. Tell it that we want the artifact stored at a base directory of totalizer in the zip file and similarly when it is expanded. Now we create a dependency set to include this module and its dependencies. We'll specify that we only want the runtime dependencies and we'll exclude the installer itself. Okay, we're ready. This produces a zip file for us. Note that its name is created from the final name in the assembly plugin configuration, combined with the ID in the assembly description. And we can see all the jars packaged inside it. Let's clear some space and try it. We'll move the installer to a new directory and expand it. This gives us a folder whose name came from the base directory setting. We'll open that folder and double click the server, which launches automatically. We can do the same for the control terminal. Then we'll load its data and send it to display. So now we have a working installer. Maybe we don't like the version numbers on the individual jars. They could get in the way if we had a script to run them, for example. So let's go back and make some changes. First we'll modify the assembly ID so the installer will have the version number. Now we'll add an output file mapping element to determine how we want the jar names to be created. The names, note, are not Maven project variables, but rather variables that the assembly plugin uses. But that means that we need to change the way the manifest class path is generated. We do this by saying that we want to create a custom class path layout, and then we specify that custom layout. Note that once again, artifact.artifactID and artifact.extension are variables handled by the plugin. In this case, since we are specifying them in a POM, we use a double dollar sign to prevent Maven from doing its normal substitution. Now we'll do a full rebuild and check the results. The zip file now has the version number and its name. And inside it, 
we see that the jars themselves have no version number. And similarly, the class paths are now version number free. In this video, we've demonstrated the use of the jar and assembly plugins to create a simple installer that could be delivered to a customer. In the next video, we'll change subjects and look at integration testing.